Imagine the web with only a few select fonts. It would be a less awesome place, void of style and character. That's why web fonts are so important. They allow designers to create custom web experiences for their users. And as a developer, it's our responsibility to ensure web fonts get implemented properly to ensure the best performance and user experience. In this video, we'll cover a few of the best practices for optimizing and using web fonts. First, you'll need a web font. There are a ton of different places where you can find free and paid fonts for personal and commercial use. Some of my favorites include FontShare, Uncut, Open Foundry, and Google Fonts. You can load fonts from some of these services, but I recommend hosting your own fonts because it gives you more control. This might sound complicated, but trust me, it's easy, and I'll show you how. First, we want to download the font files. In my case, I'm downloading Poppins from Google Fonts. Next, we'll use the web font generator from Transfonter to help us create optimized fonts. The first thing we need to do is upload our fonts. This tool will create WAF and WAF2 font files, which are the most optimized, and over 97% of web users use a browser that supports them. Next, we'll want to subset our font, which removes all the unused characters and symbols from the files that we don't need for the languages that we want to support, resulting in a smaller file. In my case, I'm only going to support Western languages, so I'll select Latin. The next option is to set font display. This option controls how web fonts will be rendered on the page. The most commonly used options are optional, swap, and block. If performance is your top priority, use optional. If displaying text is your top priority and displaying the web font is the second priority, use swap. And if displaying the web font is your top priority and you're okay with the possibility of the user not seeing the text on the screen until the font is downloaded, use block. In this example, I'll select optional. My final fonts will be in a folder called fonts inside my project's static folder, so I'll change the directory to match. Now I'll click convert and download the files. Then I'll unzip the download and drop the font files in my web project. In my case, I'm building a SvelteKit app, which uses a static folder to store static assets like fonts, but it may be different depending on the framework you use. Next, we need to inform CSS about our font files using the at font face directive. Luckily, the font generator provides a handy CSS file to make this even easier. So I'll open the file and copy and paste the values into my project's CSS file. Last, we'll set the font family on the body tag with some fallback fonts. And now we're ready to start using our optimized web font. We can ensure our font loads by heading into the network tab and refreshing the page on our dev server. Inside this tab, we can see our font being loaded. And that's it. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And be sure to check out our other project-based tutorials on skillthrive.com and on this YouTube channel. Again, I'm Hunter from Skillthrive, and I'll see you in the next one.